We're having really big feelings here. Yeah. So what the people on stream are going to be joining us mid-conversation, we are fiercely debating uh, what is correct in the Star Wars universe. Clearly what you do in a Star Trek campaign is you start debating Star Wars. Uh, but hey, uh, welcome everyone to the ninth session of Akagi. Uh, hopefully from this point onward, we will be resuming our every other week schedule. Um, as I have already told my players, and we are still in talks about it, um, there will probably be one to three more sessions of Akagi as a game, but hopefully we will find a new system, a new group, uh, or not a new group, a new system to go to. So these same lovely people will be just in a different setting with new characters uh, playing in a different system. Um, more on that as we figure that out, but here's your heads up that uh, Akagi is coming to an end soon. But we still have this session today and then maybe one to two more. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to jump right into a scene. Uh, it has been probably about a month since our last session, the one where... Uh, you all tracked down and sort of deciphered a Klingon plot to sort of illegitimize or illegitimize uh, the Starfleet personnel of a certain starbase. Not that the starbase needed help doing that. The crew was pretty bad. Um, in the month since, um, you, of course, have received accolades from Starfleet. Uh, you've received uh, many communiques about the Klingons, mostly because your previous actions up to this point... Uh, have helped or hindered the Klingons sort of acclimating with the Kittimer Accords and all that. So, you know, you have been kept up to date in the situation. And other than that, just been your standard everyday patrolling the borders, patrolling the home homeland uh, type scenario. And today, uh, we are going to start with the senior staff uh, already in the briefing room uh, midway through a senior staff meeting. And uh, you are free to role play as you wish. You may bring up whatever topic comes to mind. All right, number one, let's talk about this again. You said you would rather watch Attack of the Clones. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is it's not a bad movie, and I like it. I mean... The, the first one with the whole, let's say that magic powers come from, from uh, uh, mildew and, and bacteria, and, and that's, that's horrible. I mean, at least, at least it was a good somewhat action war movie. I mean, can, can we at least give it that much credit? Okay, Zarya, I need you to look through the regs because I'm not really sure about this. How how do I court martial Zines? Uh, do we just go straight to the brig? Now, what do we do here? Now, now hold on. I, I don't think that Commander Zarya is a good uh, person to put in on this, seeing as how she hasn't seen any of them. I mean, the time that I spent on Earth was spent doing such things as like, Going to medical school, working. I don't know how much free time I really had to do I, those sorts I, of things. I was a I professor at Starfleet Academy, and I, I still know, had Earth, time to see Earth these Media movies that the humans wanted thing. me to see. Earth Media isn't my thing. No, it's really not. I blame I the mean... pink skins. <laughs> I have to say, while I was a kid that grew up on a desert colony... That whole speech that he gave about sand, just, it never resonated. It just didn't. Okay, sand. Riley, you're the tiebreaker here. Hold on, what are we talking about here? <laughs> I thought we were going over the duty roster. How did this happen? Your guess is as good as mine. I, I blame it going too long without shore leave. Yes, and the we have a giant computer that we're almost literally sitting on, and for some reason, the only movies people want to watch. <sighs> All right, I'm going to start erasing movies. <laughs> oh, dear. you know, I, I think we could both agree if we erase that movie, if we erase that movie from the computer banks, that that would be a better use of memory for just about anything else that we have. I mean, out of out of the nine, we can get rid of what six, seven of them. 
No, six of them. I I don't think the size. I don't think these files are going to be a worry for our computer system. I think we can just leave them as is. Captain and I, I reach over and I, I press. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was, was going to say, I press something on the con the library controls. It. Computer, delete attack of the clones. Uh, authorization, Miller Alpha 3-4. Permanent deletion. And then erase over the uh, the files again. Warning, you are uh, using an Omega level clearance. Please confirm. Do it. Zines is typing on a pad real quick while the computer is doing the, are you sure you want to delete this thing? Mm -hmm. And then he just kind of leans back in his chair and crosses his arms as the captain finished deleting it and holds up the pad and says, it's okay, I have a copy now. <laughs> Do we have to report this to Starfleet? Yes, I should say, or at least the computer will say, as a reminder, using Omega level clearance does autumn generate a report back to Starfleet. It's fine. It's fine. Why do you need that clearance to do this? Isn't that the clearance you used to cross the neutral zone? Actually, I think that Omega Lever clearance is even higher up than the clearance I need to eradicate life on a planet. But it feels like a good use of my authority. It must be some weird propaganda movie. I, I don't think I'm going to watch it. Wait, wait, hold on. Time out, time out. So you're human, and you've never seen this movie. I... Same with uh, Lieutenant Zarya. I, I didn't have a lot of time to watch movies growing up. I was with my parents being dragged from one political conference to the other. Half the time I'm fighting Andorian kids, and the other half of the time it's Klingon kids. Or maybe it's even uh, Vulcan kids, who I don't even know why they're picking on me, but they are. Uh, Captain, permission to court martial Lieutenant Commander Riley. I'd have to say, uh, well, I guess we could do that. Sorry, let's add Riley's court martial. We'll do that right after Zines' court martial. It'll be a court martial day. I'm not signing I'll, off on any of these. I'll stand in front of the wall. <laughs> oh, God. To save us from this, there is a yellow blinking light next to the captain that signifies that there is an incoming message from the bridge. Hey, Captain, I, I think Starfleet's caught up with your uh, your deleting of, of a good action movie. All right, let's see what's going on before uh, Galactic War breaks out before we've decided what to do here. Uh, Bridge, this is the Captain. What's going on? Uh, yes, sir. There is a transmission playing, sir. Uh, we've tried to nail down where it's coming from, but it appears to be some sort of... Uh, I believe the phrase is a uh, a dead drop. It seems to be something that was inserted into our computer core and wasn't playing until now. Very, very timely observation. Uh, could you give us more details on, on this transmission? You probably want to come see it for yourself, sir. All right, very good. We're on our way. So you all head up onto the bridge, and uh, sure enough, uh, after you all take your stations, Zarya, where are you? There's Zarya and Riley, you're there too. Uh, on the view screen, uh, you see a very dark-haired, almost borderline purple. It's somewhere in that neighborhood of brown to purple. It's dark nonetheless, but a uh, long-haired individual uh, they appear to be feminine in nature. Um, however, their face is almost darkened out. Like, you're not really able to see their facial features. Um, the reason you're settling on a feminine versus a masculine is mostly because of the overall figure shape and the voice that is coming from the view screen. And the voice, as you are joining mid-conversation, uh, begins to say... I am giving you coordinates to the planet now. It is crucial that you come and rescue us before he finds out. Now, unfortunately, if you come and simply transport down to the colony, he will simply destroy you as outsiders. But if you come dressed in appropriate garb, he may simply think that you are visitors from another town or another city. 
Honestly, the situation is far too complicated to go into here, but needless to say, we do need Starfleet help, Starfleet's help on this one. And then the message stops, and the view screen returns to normal. I guess Cyril was probably the officer in charge while we were all away. Mm -hmm. uh, Ensign, what can you tell us about that transmission? We just caught the tail end. Well, uh, you missed the part where uh, whoever that was, they never identified themselves. Uh, they were speaking about a old Earth colony, uh, one that was launched when the old DY-100s were launched. Uh, apparently has been out in the fringes uh, for quite a while, and they are, to put it bluntly, sir, they are squawking for aid. Uh, something about a uh, crazed defender that's keeping them trapped on the planet. Okay, interesting. Well, dog. Apologies, sir. I must have uh, left a video on. Uh, Ensign, let's. I guess let's set course and see what we can do to help these people. Uh, if you could do a long range scan, please. Let's. See if we can determine what we're headed into, and in the meantime, let's go to yellow alert. All right. So, um, oh, okay. you said you said the recording or the whatever was a dead drop in our computer system. That is correct, sir. So, not that we received it; it was in there already. Correct. Can we find out when it was put in? Uh, Mr. Riley might be able to, sir, but as far as I can tell, the, f the file was both self-activating and self-terminating. <laughs> I'll, um, I guess I'll try to discover the source of the file. All right. So, Riley, uh, you're going to be rolling a Insight plus Engineering... The ship will be assisting you with a computer's engineering. And I will say the difficulty on this will be a three. Okay. I don't believe any of my focuses would apply, so I'm just going to go for it. Um, do we have any momentum? Uh, you have none at the moment, unfortunately. I'll, I'm just going to go for it. Okay. <laughs> Oof. Wow. So yeah, don't even roll the ship because uh with a complication and no successes, uh you're not gonna get anything. In fact, uh Riley, when you go to sort of scan the resident uh memory where the program was, uh you realize almost with a fallen heart that uh that whole omega level deletion that Miller just ran, yeah, apparently it bled over a little bit. <laughs> I'll I'll make a note of that for my personal logs. Um, maybe uh, the captain has gone a little overboard here. I have no regrets. But yeah, uh, the other thing that we have to manage is that you're doing a long range scan of the coordinates to see what's there. So I believe either Zarya or Cerule, uh, whichever one of you would care to roll, uh, you're going to be doing a reason science, and the Akagi will be assisting you with a sensor science. Uh, the difficulty on this is just a one, and that is after accounting for your sensor suites. I've got the ship up. I can roll for that. All right. I'll roll for it. Oh, does the ship's... um. Advanced sensor suites come to play here? Yeah, yeah, I already reduced it for you. It was a difficulty two, it's now a difficulty one. All right, two successes. So you get actually, oh, close on a crit for the ship. So you get one momentum. So, uh, Zarya, what you're seeing on the sensors is a small Class M dwarf planet, um, which is kind of rare. Like, usually Class Ms are, like, Earth-sized or maybe Mars-sized uh, this is more like a moon, or maybe something about the size of Pluto. It's very small, barely rates being a planet, and it is orbiting a uh, blue giant star. And as far as you can tell, there's nothing abnormal about the sun or the planet, other than maybe just, you know, the planet's a little bit smaller than you were expecting. 
would we be able to tell anything else in particular about the planet? Like, if there's any life signs on it? Um, I would whatnot? say not with long range sensors. When you get okay. in system, gotcha. you could scan. Will do. Okay. And I will relay that information to everybody else. I'm not going to repeat it since you just repeated it. <laughs> So, Mr. Riley, no insight on where this transmission came from, eh? Uh, no, there appears to be something... Uh, it appears that when you use that Omega-level clearance to delete uh, that file, and I use finger quotes there when I say it, um, there, it appears to have uh, maybe complicated issues with finding what happened here. I can't find the file. That's too bad. Understood, Mr. Riley. But if you'd seen that movie, I think you would see you would agree that uh, it was worth it. Ensign Fredrickson turns in his chair and says, uh, Captain, we're getting a hail from Starfleet Command. OK, put it on the viewer, please. All right. So appearing on screen is a uh, unknown Starfleet Admiral, a human in nature, and uh, he looks very portly. Uh, he has chub around his face. Uh, he's balding a little bit, you know, typical, you know, high-ranking admiral fare. Uh, and he says, uh, Captain Miller, uh, I wanted to personally congratulate you on uh, recognizing and eliminating a cognito hazard. Uh, admiral, I'm afraid I don't know what I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I that, whisper, uh, that Omega... I whisper to, uh, to anyway. Commander Zions, is that Admiral Lucas? Clearly, Admiral Lucas. Uh, yes, that's his name now. So Admiral Lucas says, well, Captain, when you uh, used that Omega level clearance not uh, 30 minutes ago, of course, we received a report on it. We investigated the file type that you deleted, and we found a memetic virus embedded within it. Uh, so we have ordered across, star across the entire Federation for all files of this nature to be scrubbed. Uh, it's good to hear, Admiral. Uh, that, that sounds like a, a very worthwhile cause. I, I'm glad to have uncovered this uh, this terrible virus. It, all in a day's work. Very good. Keep up the good work. Admiral out, and the screen goes dark. I guess that was more important than I thought it was in the meeting. Congratulations, Captain. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lieutenant Commander. What can you tell us about this planet we're coming up on? It looks a little small for an M-Class. Yeah, it certainly is. You're within range. Okay. Can I uh, scan again? Do I need to uh, roll for I it? I would say you'll get it for free. Um, okay. There is a small colony. They appear to be human. Um, they are located in the northern hemisphere on sort of a coastal area. Uh, there's approximately 150 life signs. And in the computer system, is there any information on this colony? No. In fact, the records do not indicate that any DY-100 ship, the sleeper ships, there was no <laughs> record of one coming out this far. That's interesting. We, um, we have a mystery on our hands. We do. Didn't the uh, Fredrickson, if you could go ahead. Didn't the D one hundreds have faulty navigation systems? A lot of them ended up going wildly off course. I mean out of character, yes, they did. Ensign Fredrickson, let's uh Let's see if we can help these people, if you wouldn't mind opening hailing frequencies. Uh, right away, sir. Uh, hailing frequencies are open. To the colony, this is Captain Jeffrey Miller of the Federation Starship Akagi. It's our understanding that you may require assistance. Is there any way that we can provide aid? And Fredrickson keeps that sort of hand to his ear and says, Nothing, sir, just static. Can't confirm that they've received, sir, but 
they are not broadcasting a reply. Well, okay. Uh, Zara, you've confirmed that there's actually people on this planet, right? Yes, according to our scans, there's a very small colony down there. Seems to be humans. Nothing really seems out of the ordinary other than, you know, the size of the planet. The fact that they're not answering. Everything else seems to look like a normal colony other than the fact that they shouldn't be here. Number one, is there anything that piques your antenna in the system? Anything hostile looking? Uh, nothing hostile looking. Uh... If the message on the, or if what the message said was true, hailing them, uh, according to them, could result in them wanting to destroy us. But I don't see anything uh, out of the ordinary or anything that uh, worries me. Um, I'm going to try to scan the surface for... Let's say surface to space weapons. Okay. That's going to be a uh, reason security assisted by the ship's sensors security. Uh, accounting for your advanced sensor suites, this will be a difficulty of two. I've got the ship. Um, no help from the ship. Would um, Starship Tactical Systems be an applicable focus? I'm going to say no, because the these aren't like tactical shipboard weapons you're looking for. You're more specifically looking for planetary-based ones, and those are a whole different beast. Okay. Uh, but you still get the two successes. Uh, what you find is that there are indications that part of this colony did basically dissemble the DY-100 and use it as materials. But best case, and we're talking an extremely marginal best case, like less than 1%, um, the only weapons they might have uh, that could even get into orbit are like old, very, very old uh, orbital missiles, which wouldn't even put a dent in your hull. Um, yeah. Yeah. Going along with my previous statement, Captain, the uh, the only weapons that I could even fathom them having on the on the surface and uh, that sensors could read would be the old um, missiles that would uh, missiles or other low energy weapons that would be on that um, DY one hundred um, weapon weapons so low powered that they. Even without shields, they wouldn't really do much to us. Um, if we don't need the sensors, I can start scanning the rest of the system. It just occurred to me, Mr. Zarya, and I'd appreciate your your insight on this. If we're dealing with the possibility of a DY-100, say an, an ancient Earth vessel that has crashed here, and uh, a group of people that are, are perhaps uh, descendants of that population... The Prime Directive may actually come into play. Our interfering or even contacting with this society might interfere with their progress. I'm wondering if if there's no distress that we're detecting, if we shouldn't just go about our way. That's very interesting, Captain. Particularly since they are humans... Would they still count as being like Earth descended humans, or would they have be count as like a completely separate civilization by this point because of the time and the nature of their break from the mainstream civilization? I think it's one of those gray areas where there's not necessarily too much information available in terms of precedent. I think if they don't have warp technology that we should treat them as the same we would with any other civilization that's pre-warp and the prime directive would come into play 
that's very reasonable. I wonder if they have knowledge of earlier Earth civilization. I mean, that's something that we wouldn't be able to know without talking to them. But it's certainly an interesting it, social situation to be in. In your scan, Zarya, were you able to tell if all the people in the colony, were they human? They were. Yeah, as far as I was able to tell, 100% human, occasional life signs of native fauna and flora, but in terms of humanoids, all human, Earth-type human. Are we able to tell anything about the the registration of the ship? What, I know that uh, records from that period of time might be spotty, um, but are we able to tell anything about the manifest of that ship? Um, I would say that your orbital scans are not very conclusive. Conceivably, though, if you were to go down to the planet and find a computer core or find... Uh, maybe a side of the deck plating with the registry number on it. Uh, like a seatbelt? I was wondering if we would be able to tell like what their current technological level is. We know that it's not warp mm -hmm. capable, but like where, how far back, I guess, ha is their technology compared to what they arrived there with? Yeah, and it's strange that they were able to communicate with us, so it'd be interesting to find out. What I would say in that regard, and again, this is based on your orbital scans, is that they are somewhere between the Renaissance and the Industrial Age. So they haven't quite hit that sort of automated machinery late yet, but they're definitely more medieval than industrial, if that makes any sense. Okay, that makes sense. Well, what I'm inclined to do at this point is perhaps we send an away team, standard uh, prime directive protocol in place to blend in with the natives where we can to see if we can get some answers. But then if there's no distress with this colony, we gather what information we can, pass it along to Starfleet to send out a vessel for further research if, if they deem it necessary. Yeah, if there are no objections, I think that's that's probably what we should do. Mr. Zines, if you wouldn't mind moving us into transporter range, uh, once we beam the away team down, though, let's keep the shields up. Uh, it's possible they don't have any weapons, but, you know, a D100 makes me think that it could be possible they have a nuclear weapon stash somewhere, and I would like to take no chances here. Uh, of course, Captain. Um do we want to give any heed to the message that was left with us about teleporting in, transporting in, or do we want to try taking a shuttle somewhere else and walking in? It was transporting out that was the issue, wasn't it? Are there any records of um, of uh, more modern ships going missing in this area of space? Uh, no. In fact, uh, the last sort of survey vessel that came out this far uh, did not record the existence of the star system. That's not ominous at all. To answer your question, number one, I I don't have much faith in that message. To to tell you the truth, it's. It seems like a gremlin. We don't know where it came from, and there's no proof that it came from this planet at all. Understood, Captain. I uh, just feel I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't bring up a concern. Uh, I will get a, an away team ready to go. Um, uh, who would you like me to take and not take? Uh, it's interesting that you say that, Mr. Zions. If we have a colony full of humans, it's probably best to keep the... Uh, the more attractive non-pink skins here on the ship. That would be your... Right. So I'm not going, which means you're also not going. Remember, we've had this talk about the archer rule, right? Well, don't worry, I'll, I'll bring... Uh, look over at Raleigh. Raleigh will protect me. Yeah, I, I've got your back, Captain. 
Right. Are we only sending humans down since we don't know what their knowledge is of the larger Federation? Well, I was going to say, Mr. Zarya, how would you feel about a quick operation at, in sick bay to um, smooth out those ridges? I mean, I'd be willing to give it a try. I can't guarantee how nice it'll look. I've never seen myself as a human before, but okay. <laughs> Out of character, I'm assuming that's something we can do in the TOS era. Yeah, I mean, it, the reason, again, they didn't do it in uh, TOS era, at least as far as I could tell, is because uh, effects budgets. Um, yeah, I'm sure we have I, some fancy makeup-esque stuff. I, I don't know how... We'll just put okay. a beanie on her. It worked for Spock. We'll just put a beanie on her. <laughs> uh, I was going to cut in with um, out of character, but on topic. How would it not be in the budget? They would just literally have the actor go in without the original makeup. You know it's what I best mean? It's not to think too hard about these things. <sighs> All right. Anyways, um, Zines will just give a glare and Antenna will turn in a um, annoyed look to the captain. Captain, no, please don't. Captain should stay on the ship, not go on away missions. Captain, don't. And then I'll look to oh. her to uh, uh, Cerule. Um, that that's good enough for an official protest, right? Close enough, sir. Okay. Go ahead, Captain. Have fun. Don't get hurt. Oh, don't worry. Number one. What could go wrong here? Why do you always say that? What is it with you humans always saying that before? Uh, I'll never understand pink skins. And he just kind of rubs his temple. We'll be sure to keep in commander. contact, Commander. Oh, don't worry. At the first sign of trouble, I'm beaming you all out. So, Walter, I need to know, who are you bringing supporting character-wise? Uh, I don't know. Because we don't really have any... Um, let me see. The Doctor... I was thinking the doctor, um, because. What do you mean we can't dress up for Anne? Um, because I'm not doing a Russian accent. Uh, <laughs> I, I do it enough playing EFT. Um, maybe Fredrickson. He does have focuses in Xeno linguistics and encryption, subspace communications. Uh, yeah, we could do that. I guess I'll I'll take, um, yeah. Uh, Fredrickson, I guess. Alrighty. Um, and then Zines will just, uh, he won't take the big chair. He'll command everything from his normal spot. Alright. So, uh, I need to be extra sure here. Are you shuttling down and walking in, or transporting and then walking? I think we would just transport in and walk then. I, I still... Don't give too much credence to that communication because we just don't know much about it. I would rather take the caution of beaming in than taking a shuttle, which could potentially crash, and then you have an artifact. Like I think watching out for the Prime Directive at this point is probably more important. Okay. I don't know. If this is a small colony, we could probably park it far enough away. And then if shit hits the fan, we can actually run. Because if communications are cut, that's it. We're done. I feel safer with the shuttle, but it's it's obviously up to the captain. It is a very small civilization. It, are there any sort of like natural landmarks that would make it easy to hide it in? A large forest, yeah, a uh, cliffside that a is city park. conveniently blocking off view. I, I would say that there are large enough forests near the colony that you could conceivably hide a shuttle in them. So, I mean, we could get away with the shuttle and then not have to worry about getting stranded here, potentially. Plus, it'll give the captain a chance to get behind the controls again. But you do make a very compelling argument, Mr. Riley. I have to think back that we have protocols in place if we haven't communicated with the ship. And I know Zion's going to be watching us. And you have an Excelsior-class vessel in orbit if anything goes wrong. 
I just feel on a plan, especially this size, to park a shuttle even within an appreciable walking distance just might be too much risky. Might be too risky here, especially considering that we have a uh, civilization that's pre-industrial on our hands. All right, so it sounds like a transport. Uh, my final question before I move maps and we continue on, uh, what, if any, equipment are you bringing with you? Oh, well... And for I'll, sake of I argument, think, let's say that... I'll leave that for the captain. I think standard protocol for a prime directive, so, you know, from what we've seen, it's probably phasers, phaser pistols, tricorders, communicators. Okay. Um, would you be open carrying them? Would you be carrying them in a rucksack or a backpack, a duffel bag? Probably concealed. Uh, could we take a phaser one instead of a phaser two, since that's more concealable? Yes, you could take a phaser one. I think I would ask everyone to take a phaser one and then, you know, communicators and tricorders and then universal translator, you know, all concealed as much as possible. Are we going down in uniform or in more plain clothes? I mean, I'm sure we can't tell even from orbit what sort of like the local style is. I don't know. Um, if I to blend in. to mention it, Part of the coordinates you were given were a style of dress. Like there were like oh, okay. patterns for one. Okay. So we can blend okay. in somewhat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we'd go down in uniforms. We want to try to blend in. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you suit up, as it were. Uh, Zarya gets the ridges smoothed out. Uh, the rest of you don the renaissance looking outfit that comes out of the replicator and you all transport on down and when you arrive you see almost an idyllic scene before you um it is a very sort of i don't want to say whitewashed but basically every building here is made out of a smooth white stone that has been immaculately carved with like little design work and lattices and things of that nature um, the windows that you can see, most of them are some form of stained glass of varying colors. And uh, sort of at the edge of the city where you have been down, uh, there doesn't appear to be many people, but there is a large uh, willow tree with white leaves and white coloration to match the stonework around it uh, that is sitting upon a very lush green hill. And... Uh, you know, you start to look around, you're not really seeing anyone. And then before your very eyes, the wind sort of swirls around underneath the tree. And an old gentleman appears almost out of nothing. Uh, he does look to be in his older years. Uh, he has a very long white hair that blends in with his very, uh, shall we say, prominent white beard. Uh, he is wearing clothes which could be mistaken for uh, a scholar or some form of uh, nobility, perhaps. And he has a old Earth-style pipe in his mouth, which he promptly removes and points the end at you and says, Hail there, strangers. I know not what magics you use to approach us, but know that I cannot permit you entrance without knowing who you are and where you come from. Hello, sir. My name is Miller. My companions and I are traders from the north. We've journeyed here to, to visit your city. I see. And uh, he sort of looks around you. What is it you have come to trade? Uh, we're, in fact, exploring this area to see if there is uh, what the needed goods are that we can return home and then transport here for for commerce. This is an exploratory mission, if you will. I see. I see. Well... You seem a trustworthy sort. I don't really see any reason not to permit you. Uh, he sort of motions behind him at the city and says, May I welcome you to the city of Glastonbury? Uh, my name is Merlin, and I am protector here. Uh, 
I thank you for your welcome, Merlin. Is is there a city uh, city square or somewhere that you could direct us to so that we could interact and and engage in our in our trade? There will be once this jet stops flying overhead. Uh, yes, he says, uh, yes, you'll simply follow the road behind me here. You'll go up a few blocks and you will arrive in our main trading area where I'm sure you may find the answers to your questions. Thank you very much. Good day. Oh, and uh, one other thing. I would appreciate it if you stopped by my tower on the edge of town opposite this one. Whenever you spare a moment, I would like to know more about the magics you use to arrive here. Well, certainly, we will stop by uh, once we've concluded with our business. Very good. And he sort of waves his hand, and almost again, he sort of evaporates into the wind. God, I should have scanned him while he was the captain was talking to him. I feel like he might have noticed if we scanned him. He seems to know a lot more than he actually states that he does. Magic? Yeah, I have a feeling we might actually want to give some more attention to that tower of his he's talking about. That might be... There might be something going on there. Could he be the he that was mentioned in the message? The one that would kill... I suppose that's possible. He didn't seem like the homicidal sort to me, just by first impressions alone. But he did seem powerful. And he seemed very invested in the protection of this city. It's entirely possible that his aims are for ill intention, but we should remind ourselves to keep an open mind and... Give him a chance before we, we judge him. I still don't give much faith to that message until we've learned more. Uh, so far, he has not done anything towards us at all, except from give us a greeting. Do we still have communication with the ship? Uh, would you like to try your communications unit and find out? Yeah, let's do it. Cap it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure enough, you are getting a signal back to the Akagi. I'll kind of turn around and hide my communicator, you know, maybe in, inside the group of us so people glancing by just couldn't see us. Uh, this is Captain Miller to Akagi. Akagi, please come in. Uh, this is Ensign Cerule, sir. Uh, Zines has stepped away to the restroom. We are reading you loud and, cl loud and clear. I bet he took that pad that he recorded the movie on with him. Uh, but anyway, Ensign, uh, we have successfully found the city... Uh, we're going to investigate further. I was wondering, uh, I'm going to send you some coordinates and I'll just send up the coordinates to the tower. If you wouldn't mind doing a scan of this location, it's a little interesting attraction that we've been pointed to. It'd be nice to know some more information. Uh, running a scan now, sir. Sir, scans are showing that it is a fairly standard stone structure. We are not detecting any power sources or... Really, any sort of advanced technology within. Okay. Well, we'll continue on our mission and check back in at the standard interval. All right. Until then, Miller out. And I think while, uh, while the captain was doing that, I take Fredrickson aside to the tree and I'm making a big show of being like tourists. Like, wow, look at the beauty of this tree with its white glowing leaves amazing i've never seen anything like this just just being loud and boisterous to distract so uh while this is all going on uh zarya you feel something rubbing against your legs i'll look down at it did Barkley get caught in the transporter pad? You were pretty damn yep. sure that Barkley was not on the transporter pad when you went, but you're looking down and there's no mistake in this cat. Are there 
from the scans that we got of the planet, are there any similar animals here, or is Barclay very obviously alien? I would say you would have seen a few felines and a few uh, canines, but whether or not they're, like, cat-like, you have no idea. Okay. But to, to sort of add to this worry, uh, after Barkley notices that you've noticed him, uh, he starts sprinting off towards the path that uh, Merlin had indicated. So he starts sprinting off over in that direction. Uh, Captain, permit me to fire. No, Mr. Riley. No, this is... Oh, that's a crew member, nope. Mr. Riley. <laughs> Technically. And Riley had actually... Put his hand down to his hidden phaser, but then puts his hand up like, "Damn it, my one chance." Captain, permission to catch the cat? Yeah, let's let's go after him. Let's let's not make a big deal about it. He's he's actually quite inconspicuous, even though he is racing to this location. Uh, we still don't want the inhabitants to really think that anything's out of the ordinary. He's he's a harmless kitty cat. I mean, if anything, then he could just be accompanying us in some native fauna that they haven't seen in this area of the world, I suppose. Exactly. If we keep our cool, they probably won't get too excited. So you run after Barkley the cat, and sure enough, uh, you do arrive in the city center, or it fares for it. It is literally just a stone cord or a stone uh, open area, which has several stalls hawking wares of fruit, vegetables, meats, things of that nature. And um, in general, uh, it would be commonplace in a medieval or a renaissance fair type thing. Um, you're not seeing anyone in armor, and give me one moment. Sorry about that. Uh, you're not seeing anyone in armor. Uh, the good news is that your clothes seem to match those of the people in this area. And, uh, it is a overall, uh, you know, very joyous, like there's music playing, you know, the people are talking vividly. Uh, they are more or less not aware that you stick out any. In fact, as far as they're concerned, you're just someone new. That's a relief, at least. Riley, you keep your eyes it? peeled, or, or maybe scan and look around. We, we want to see if there's any technology as discreetly as possible, but... If there's no problem with these people, we'll just continue on our way to chase down Barkley. So what happens yeah. is uh, you see Barkley run up to a blonde-haired woman uh, and leaps into her arms, and the woman just barely, like, scrambles to catch the cat and then sort of looks around like, where the hell did this thing come from? And then spots you all, like, staring at the cat and walks over to you. Uh, she is, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, six feet tall, which probably just a hair over, uh, six feet, if that. Uh, she has, uh, curly locks, and she looks to be somewhere in her mid to late forties. And, uh, she's wearing a fairly plain white dress, uh, that, uh, pretty nondescript, just, just a dress. Uh, but she sort of motions at the cat and then at you all and says um is this one yours and i approach her yes yes thank you ma'am our our cat managed to uh, escape from us he's he's got quite the mind of his own i see well uh my name's guinevere uh i can tell that you're new here uh, is there perhaps something i could help you with it's a pleasure to meet you, Guinevere. My name is Jeffrey, and these are my companions. We are traveling traders from the north. We've just arrived at, arrived at Glastonbury, and we are just uh, really investigating, interesting, interested in the people here. What is what is it that you do here in Glastonbury? We live, we drink, we create, we live a idyllic life, a utopia, I suppose one might say. 
Is it the same in the north? Uh, we have no complaints. Uh, sometimes working a little more than drinking, unfortunately. Disagree from time to time about uh, recreational hobbies. But generally, uh, we have no complaints. I see. Well, uh, I don't suppose you are perhaps from that special city to the north, and she winks at you specifically, Miller. I'm sorry, Miss Guinevere, I don't quite know what you mean. What I mean to say is that when you say to the north, you mean somewhere very, very far to the north. Well, it is several days' travel, if that's what you mean. Hmm. Well, here's your cat back, and she literally hands Barkley the cat to Miller, and Barkley meows in protest. Uh, if you need anything, uh, I am going to be in this square for the next uh, several hours. Please feel free to uh, flag me down if you need any, any assistance. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you, and thank you for capturing our wayward sea lion. All right. So she steps off. I mean, she's still present uh, in the scene, like just in the background, but now you have time to converse amongst yourselves again. Can I clandestinely scan her? Sure. Uh, this is going to be... Well, what are, you, what are you scanning specifically? Are you scanning her bio signs? Are you scanning for technology? Just her bio signs. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a reason and medicine, and the difficulty here will be a one. One is there all we you go. need. So yeah, uh, you are able to confirm that uh, she is human. In fact, uh, her bio signs show that she's in actually rather good health. And I, I say this quietly to the captain. Uh, did anyone up else pick up poorly normal? Did, it, did anyone else pick up that hint that perhaps she knows that we are uh, not locals? I think Arthur had the same. Arthur, Guinevere, seems kind of like a an old fairy tale to me, Captain. Well, we do know they are from Earth, so it's possible they just, based off of Earth mythology, their their naming convention for, for people. I agree. It's an uh, interesting series of coincidences so far. I'm not fully versed in the... in the story. So, I, I'm not sure how to proceed here, Captain. I'm following your lead. Uh, if, if I remember in, uh, never really studied that much on Earth history. I think it had something to do with the Separatists. The Separatists were breaking away from the Republic. Uh, the details are fun. Mr. Riley, did you pick up anything from this Guinevere character? No, my scan shows she's human. Completely healthy. Nothing weird. Nothing out of the ordinary. Now, I'm not a doctor or anything, so I'm not the best to, to read these scans, but from what I can tell, she's normal. Okay, well, I guess we should proceed with our investigation. Uh, Mr. Zari, I'd be very interested in your opinion about the mental well-being of these people. It seems everyone is happy and fine. I, I don't see anything for distress so far. Yeah, I wanted to while they were talking, sort of get a feel for the social interactions going on, what is the daily business of the area, since we are in a main square, like, just get a read on the crowd and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, roll me a insight, and I guess medicine for you, because, you know, that is sort of your strong suit here, and that's where psychology usually goes. Um, let's do an insight, medicine, a difficulty of two, 
And your focus, I think you have a focus that applies here. I certainly do have a focus that applies. I have social networks. All right. Well, uh, with two successes, uh, what you're seeing is uh, that uh, people are looking at you maybe a little bit strangely. Like at first you thought, oh, you know, they're just looking at us like new people. But there's almost a, a hesitant hope in the way they're looking at you. Like their gazes are lingering for a little bit. And there's always like a hushed conversation, but an excited one um, when they look away. Um, Guinevere in particular is making sure to look at Miller every once in a while. And how are people reacting like? Is anybody seem to be fearful of somebody in particular? I'm willing to pay for information if I need to. Um, I would say yes, that you would have to spend your one momentum to get an answer to that question. That's fine. It seems like it's an important clue. Okay. Um, there's not like an outright fear, but you can definitely tell Weariness. that they're restraining themselves. Um, probably because of reasons that have been mentioned previously in this session. That's reasonable. Um, is there a quiet place maybe to sit and just watch for a while? I know that's a bit slower than everybody's hoping for, but I have the feeling if we just get into the crowd and sort of see what they're doing, even though they're obviously watching us, mm -hmm. that that'll help us understand the people at least. Yeah, there's uh, there's a few stone benches you could uh, take part of. I guess the other yeah. idea is maybe we engage one of the one of the merchants and see if we can suss anything out. That's a, that's a great idea, Mr. Raleigh. Why don't we break up, not go too far away from each other, maybe stay in sight, but there's no reason we have to stick together as a group. That might actually draw more attention to us. Now, Captain, I know it was my idea, but if I'm not talking to a computer console, I'm not very sociable, so I suggest maybe I sit back and just watch. That's okay, whatever you think, Mr. Raleigh. I turned to Frederick Frederickson, I would I would really be interested in your opinion on the language that is being used here. Do you have any clues about origin of where these people might have come from based on the language and syntax that they're Well how about I make a roll and then ELH can tell me what I know. Alright. Uh, for you it's going to be an insight and science. Uh, I believe he has a focus. Yeah, he has a focus that applies here. Uh, the difficulty on this is just a one. All right, so you get two momentum. Uh, you are basically realizing, uh, after, you know, checking your universal translator, that uh, the dialect of English that is being spoken here is more uh, olden. It is Arthurian, to coin a phrase. <laughs> so almost like King James, uh, King's James Bible style of old English. Yes. They're speaking early modern English. Okay. Let's have fun with this. Uh, it looks like the language they're speaking fits quite well with the names and the architecture of this place. It's English. It's very, very old English. This all predates the transports that they were on, so that makes little sense. Predates it by a lot. The best that I can guess is perhaps they only had a small amount of media left on their computer system. And that was sort of how they learned about their home culture, but I might just be thinking about earlier before our, our conversation. Well, Mr. Fredrickson, if you'd like to try to speak to some of these folks, I would certainly be up for it. I would certainly leave it to you if you have more of a handle on the lingo. 
please do it in an actual accent. I beg you. This is me talking. <laughs> not Zarya. Please do it. I'm not doing it because I can't. I, I can't do it and keep a straight face. So. It's fine. We can't see your face. Oh. I, I I can't do it either. And and this is coming from a Renfair person. I can't I can't do the language. I I just can't. You can't so you can take lead if you want. want. Yeah, that sounds like Zarya would be the perfect lead for this. Uh huh. My job is to know things about language, not to be able to speak it. I can barely speak my own dialect. Thank you very much. Um. Well, Zarya is going to go up to perhaps some sort of artisan who's around here um, and just start having a conversation continuing along the trade pattern of like Hello, we are visitors from up north looking to perhaps begin a trade route to your fair city. Um, What sort of trades do you all engage in here so uh the marble worker as i'm flavoring him uh he stops chiseling the statue he's working on and says all right uh well uh if you're from the north i have no idea what kind of accent this is by the way uh if you're from the north uh we uh we understand there's some rare stone up that way Indeed. We haven't built too many quarries, but we do know the locations of several very fine marble veins that sure. we would be able to get set up and start moving down here, if that's something that you're interested in. It could be. Uh, depends on uh, what you're looking for in return. We're mostly just trying to get a feel for the sorts of things that you all produce here. I see that there's a a variety of different types of artisans. Your architecture and art is beautiful. Uh, this is very great work here. Well, uh, I'm not very knowledgeable about that stuff, but uh, Gwen, if you're over there, knows a whole lot. I just, I just work the stone, miss. And you do your job well. Thank you very much. He sort of nods at you and goes back to his uh, chiseling of the marble. A marble artisan wants marble. Amazing. Mm -hmm. We learned a lot today, kids. <laughs> I would be looking around. Is there anything that's out of the ordinary? I mean, of course, this is all weird, but is there anything like really out of the ordinary? Like this guy is chipping marble, sure, but he's using like a, a plasma torch or something to do it. Is there anything that's just really out of place? No, and it's it's really eerie because you're not seeing anything out of place. Like, there's so much about the situation that just does not make sense. But what is seemingly constant is the fact that everything is era appropriate for what the general feel of this area is. So he's using, like, actual hand, like, chisel and a harder implement to, uh, what is it called? A mallet. I know what a mallet is. Uh, using a mallet and chisel to work the stone. Uh, the weavers are using uh, spinning wheels, things of that nature. Um, the artists seem to be using oil paints. Uh, the fruits and the stalls and everything about, you know, the actual trade that's going on. Um, again, era appropriate. Like, you're not seeing bananas. You're not seeing pineapples. Uh, you are seeing, like, apples. And I think pears? I honestly forget where pears are in that time. But... Basically, everything is era appropriate here. Can I scan to find <clears throat> any evidence of the old uh, DY100 ship? Uh, I would say you could. However, there would be an increased complication range. And the complication would be, if rolled, uh, that someone notices you're doing this. God, I'm not good at these science scans, too. Maybe we could, con maybe instead of me scanning, we could signal the Akagi to do it instead. Or you could talk to your science person and say, hey, I want, I want you to scan this, please. I feel like you're on the other side of the, 
you're not. I think it's you just me and the captain. You can wait until I come back. Right? Yeah, let's do that. But that's my idea. I bring that up to the captain. That's a good idea, Mr. Riley. This is a. Uh... You know, I, I, I can understand Mr. Zines' paranoia, or number one's paranoia for, for this situation more and more. There is something going on here that this this all feels a little too perfect. It reminds me of the missions of the Enterprise that we had to, had to look in Starfleet Academy. I'm wondering if, uh, against my better nature, I am interested in maybe talking to this Guinevere character to find out more of what she knows. I, I think there there is something there. She seems to know more about where we're coming from, and if she knows more, then that might mean the Prime Directive does not apply here. It's your prerogative, Captain. I don't like anything about this situation. Nothing seems as if it should be... How... A normal colony from a DY-100 ship shouldn't look like this. There is precedence this makes of... No sense. There is precedence of civilizations that have been disconnected from Earth going into a, like an era out of the past. For example, the Enterprise encountered a, a civilization that had reverted back to the, the 1920s in Earth history. It should have been much more advanced. So it's a strange phenomenon, but this sort of thing has happened in the past, although I've never heard of anyone reverting to Arthurian times before. And not well, to this degree either. This isn't my specialty, Captain. <laughs> I'm out of my depth here. Actually, let's let's wait for Zoria to come back and let's let's get her assessment on what she thinks. I'm sure by then I'm starting to wander back to start to compare notes, and they all fill me in. So what should I roll to do this scan? Um, I would say this is going to be a reason and science. Mm -hmm. Um, the complication range is still going to be a 17 to 20. Okay. Um, the difficulty here will be a two. Do we want to use any of our momentum since we have them? Yeah. We need some answers here. Sure. Let's use one, keep one, just in case. Applicable focus? Um... I would say no, not for you. That's what I thought. Oh! <laughs> All right, so you succeed, but the complication is someone notices you. So uh, you learn uh, that there are fragments of the DY-100. They are contained within Merlin's Tower. Uh, however, not but a few seconds after you run this scan... Uh, Guinevere literally runs over to you and tries to shield you and says, What are you doing? Not here in the open. I'm sorry? Put it away. Oi! What do you mean? She's just playing with a kid's toy. She just looks at you like you're an idiot. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I tried uh, my Ms. best, Captain. Miss Guinevere, do you have a, um... Do you have a house or a place around here that we can go to talk that's a little more private? Yes, this way, but keep your quote-unquote toys hidden away. Yeah. Understood. Such. And I will hide away my tricorder. That's why, that's why I hadn't tried out for any of the, pl the ship's plays, Captain. Acting is very hard. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the effort, Mr. Riley. So it turns out uh, she literally leads you into what could fare for an inn or some form of tavern. And uh, she says something to the barkeep 
uh, that you don't quite catch, but the gar the barkeep just sort of nods uh, over at a private room that sort of branches off from the main tavern area where, you know, you've got benches and things you would expect from a tavern of the area. Um, but Guinevere leads you into this back area, uh, shuts the wooden door behind her, and in this room is just a large table with chairs around it. And uh, she goes over to the window, pulls the curtains closed, and says, Okay, uh, we have to be brief, but uh, you're, you're, the, you're the ones that got our distress call, yes? I'm not sure I would call it a distress call. But Can you elaborate on, on what you mean as a distress call? We we sent it out long ago. We didn't know if it would ever be heard. Um, you're from up there, and she kind of just points at the ceiling. Yes, North is up on a compass. That's true. She again. So Miss Guinevere can. Miss Guinevere, why don't you start from the beginning? Well. uh... I suppose uh, it starts with uh, the Avalon, the ship that carried us here. Uh, Merlin was one of the passengers. At least that's what we think. We're not really sure. He's rather an enigmatic individual. All that we know, and by we I mean the colonists, and are the, we are the descendants of such, um... We have been under Merlin's protection for hundreds of years, which is why everything is the way it is, because that's what Merlin knows. Um, he may not look it, but he, he's incredibly old, um, beyond anything we were able ever to tell. And there's no easy way to say it, but we think he's more or less in the later stages of some form of dementia. He is uh, very adamant about keeping any form of technology away from us. Uh, almost goes into raving fits every time he discovers one of us with it. That is unfortunate, but you mentioned distress. Well, that's sort of the thing. Uh, don't get me wrong, life here is good. We are certainly well cared for well fed and more or less left open to our own devices but there's no room to grow idyllic but her... stifling maybe exactly whatever uh my sorry oh go ahead do we still have contact with the ship uh you do yes so while while everyone's co talking to Guinevere, I'd like to send a message up to the ship to get info about the Avalon. Okay. If they can find any info. Uh, they will begin running a uh, computer database search, and we'll get back to you. Perfect. And Guinevere, it's not our custom to interfere in the uh, in other cultures or other groups. And that's that's not what we believe in. We believe in uh, helping those who are in dire need, of course, or emergency need, but it's not our place to step in. And I'm, I'm not sure what action you would expect us to take. Well, I mean, if you have the power to come here from across the stars, you have the power to take us away from here. Uh, why do you think that we came from across the stars? Is such a thing possible? She just sort of looks at you and says, I think by now it would make sense if someone was able to traverse the stars in a very rapid fashion. So you mentioned that uh, Merlin has been stifling you and has been stopping people from using technology. What's What's been happening? He, he seems to be a harmless old man. Well, unfortunately, he is uh, anything but harmless. Uh, not that he hurts us or actually causes any sort of harm to us. Um, I would liken it to a very old and 
I hate to use the word senile, but senile grandparent that is overbearing and does not allow really any sort of thing that is not within his wheelhouse. Guinevere, do you know where your forebears came from? From Earth, yes. Do you know anything of the history of Earth? Uh, no. Our ship, the Avalon, did not have uh, intact computers, or at least that is my understanding of such. This might sound really weird, but is there anyone named Arthur here? Uh, there's quite a number of uh, gentlemen that are named Arthur. Could you be more specific? Are any of them, are any of them like a king? Maybe with like a special sword? They talk to a lady in the lake? Mm, you speak of strange things, but no, nothing like that. Just checking. So, Guinevere, I, I appreciate you sharing with us the information of, of your past. Uh, we have much to discuss amongst ourselves. We will endeavor to be a little more discreet as we continue through, uh, through the city. See that you do. And with that, she stands, bows courteously, and excuses herself, leaving you all to discuss in the room privately. So it seems Commander Zines may have been right after all. He uh, he frequently is. Don't tell him I said that. I won't. I'm sorry, Captain. Should I have not been recording? <laughs> uh, very well, Mr. Fredrickson. Keep uh, keep doing what you're doing. It's okay. My my concern okay. here is that it's just making sure. Okay. My concern here is that we are still in a prime directive situation. Uh, we have even even if these are the direct survivors of the crash from the the DY one hundred, this is still a pre warp civilization. It, uh, I, I'm I'm very confused, Captain. Maybe if we can get a crew manifest. Maybe this Merlin, and I say that in quotes, Merlin, maybe this Merlin wasn't someone that was originally on the ship. If we can find evidence of someone with uh, warp level technology interfering in the growth or the, the well-being of this civilization, that changes things greatly. But if he's a member of this crew, of that crew of the ship, and they just don't like him, it's really not our concern. The prime director no, clearly states we can't interfere. But you you heard her. And we don't people just don't live that long. I don't know how he would be able to survive this amount of time. But there's so much we don't know, Mr. Riley. It could be a part of the planet or the circumstances with the city or the environment there there's so many other factors we don't know that could be prolonging this man's life un until we can definitively prove that it's through outside interference you're right we should ask whatever that would i be able to covertly scan some of the people outside of the window to see if there is any sort of information on their own life sign uh, yeah, I would say, uh... You Health could... status, how long they've lived. Yeah, uh, roll me a uh, reason medicine, difficulty of one. Another momentum. Uh, they appear to be, uh, I mean, obviously you're seeing younger and older than this, but you're seeing that the average age is somewhere between, uh, 20 and 35. Is everybody in good health or just like standard health for the technology level, it seems? Uh, excellent health, I would say. Okay. That adds another layer of interestingness if 
there's not too many people who are older. There's no like well, outliers around there. I'm sure there's one or two old people, but like real old people, according to the scans. Yeah, you're not seeing like anyone over the age of 60. Okay. It's interesting that uh, Guinevere seems to have knowledge that Merlin may have lived past that normal lifetime that we've observed. We haven't seen any proof of that yet, and at least she hasn't convinced me enough to start talking about breaking the Prime Directive. Captain, uh, are you still holding Barkley the cat? Yeah, I would I would have been holding Barkley, petting Barkley, you know. Uh, Barkley the cat begins trying to squirm out of your grip. I'll let him go. I've seen him attack hook spiders before. I, I'll i let him go if he wants. I can stun him, Captain. It's no problem. No, no, it's okay, Mr. Millie. It's okay. What's wrong, kitty cat? So, Barkley looks at you like you're an idiot. Uh, kind of waddles on over to a corner of the room. And uh, all of you hear in your minds a voice. It is the voice of the recording. And the voice says... I can see that you're not getting what's going on here very well. I will show you who I really am. And before your very eyes, uh, Barkley the cat becomes a woman. A woman that uh, you would at least recognize, if not by voice, but by uh, description of uh, her hair and figure. Uh, she appears before you, uh, garbed in a, I would say, a witch's or a... Uh, some form of a clerical type of uh, ensemble. And uh, she adjusts her uh, tunic a little bit and says, My name is Morgan Le Fay. And do I really need to say anything else? Uh, Morgan Le Fay, actually, there's quite a bit that you need to say. What are your intentions? You've, you've been on the ship for a long time. Why have you brought us here? Because it is Merlin's time. And I do not mean that in a sinister way. I simply mean that he's holding on too tightly and needs to let go. I be that. I have a question. Be that it. Go ahead. Where's Excalibur? Somewhere on Earth. We didn't exactly bring it with God us. Damn it, Captain! I lied. I read all these books as a kid. I'm sorry. I kind of laugh. If it is indeed Merlin's time, what exactly do you want from us? Well, I believe uh, I've communicated their wish to you already, but I will reiterate. Just take the people away from here. Put them on another world. You don't have to take them back to the Federation proper. Just give them a space to grow. Uh, Miss LaFay, I you've been on our ship for a long time, but I'm going to assume that you haven't picked up all the things about the way the Federation and the way our Starfleet operates. Oh, no. We have a... No, I, I'm very much aware of how your Starfleet operates. Our core tenet is non-interference, especially in a society like this that hasn't demonstrated a level of technology. It's our experience that interference and in societies that are less developed even with the best intentions, often leads to catastrophe. In fact, it's our core directive. General order number one. A general order which I could quote how many breakings with uh, within the last year? Well, be that as it may, I still, under my authority as the captain, haven't seen anything here to authorize uh, using any sort of uh, force or actions that would break this prime directive. I, I can empathize with the people here if they're unhappy with their situation, but I'm not convinced yet that it requires our interference. Hmm. Perhaps you should discuss this with Merlin and let his reaction see if that sways you any. So, Morgan? Yes, Mr. Riley. The whole time you were on our ship, 
you weren't just a cat? No, and uh, don't think I didn't catch you trying to step on my tail more than once. But you kept setting off the alarms in the warp core. I found it funny. I didn't. I did not. Right, and that's what made it funny. You know how many times Jacobs had to do an overtime shift to find out what set off that alarm? Uh, somewhere He's in the neighborhood of 67? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This answers so many questions about our captain. This is a major breakthrough for us in the engineering department. Captain, if I may, if they have gone through the lengths that they have in order to contact us to be able to have us come here to help them, I think that might warrant some sort of action. What are you proposing, Mr. Zarya? I don't know if necessarily... I don't know how much you would want to interfere, but I think at least finding some way to improve the happiness of the peoples is warranted. That's fair enough. How about this, Morgan? I'm willing to negotiate on the people's behalf with Morgan, or with, with Merlin. However, I am not willing to depose him, if, if that's your intention. I'm also not willing to relocate a society that, from what I can tell, is prospering here. Prospering here very well, in fact. Uh, the conditions here don't seem to be deplorable. I'm willing to negotiate with Merlin. But I think that's as far as I'm willing to go at this point. She sort of considers you for a moment. Says, I suppose that is a start. Would you care if I came with you, or should I remain here? What is your, what's the nature of your relationship with these people? I suppose that depends on who's telling the story. Some would paint me as a trickster. Others would paint me as the one who led the original King Arthur to Avalon. But needless to say, well, that... uh, myself and Merlin are not human. Well, we are part human, but in Merlin's case, he is what you would call an incubus. Miss Morgan, if, if you want our cooperation, I'm afraid you're going to have to do a little bit better than that. I need truths and not half talk. If Merlin's an incubus, does that make you a succubus? I suppose that would depend on your definition of such, but no, I simply am different. Do you mind if we scan you? Please. And then I look at Zarya because I'm useless for medical scans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zarya, if you want to roll me Right as he's saying that, I'm already scanning yeah. Roll me a uh, reason medicine uh, Difficulty one, please Alright, another momentum She is reading human Like nothing out of the ordinary human Are there any sort of signs of stress? Um, just in terms of like physical signs in her reading? No. Uh, again, excellent health. Probably would be able to uh, outperform uh, even some of the cadets you have on board. Does her scans match those of the rest of the people here? In general health, yes. It just occurred uh, to me, I, I think I might want to get in contact with Zines, because I think knowing that Barkley the Cat was a shape-shifting creature is probably an important detail they need to know on the ship. Okay. 
I was waiting to ask that. Uh, Morgan, how did you get on our ship in the first place? We were nowhere near here. I traveled for quite a while before I found someone like you. And she motions at the group, and, not like at you specifically, Riley. And like specifically, how did you get on? Just, just for future security reasons. Well, if you must know, I went through an airlock. Went through an airlock? Like when it was open? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Captain, I suggest that we never open the airlocks again. At this point, I'm inclined to agree. Pull out my communicator. Uh, this is Miller to Akagi. Akagi here, Captain. Uh, number one, things have just gotten a little more interesting here on this planet. Uh, come to find out, Barkley the cat followed us to the surface and is actually not a cat at all. Barkley is a shape-shifting creature that identifies itself as Morgan Le Fay. Okay. That uh, is exactly I, my reaction. I'm 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 waiting for the uh, you know I I'm sorry, Commander. I'm sorry, Number One, that you were correct that things were going to happen and I shouldn't be here. I'm not ready to say that yet, Number One. I just want to let you know that we had an intruder on the ship for an undetermined amount of time, so you might. It's it's a good idea to start doing some precautions, maybe sweeping the ship to see if this this uh, person left anything that uh, we might not be expecting. Understood, Captain. I will look for anything that the cat that I didn't like from the beginning left on the ship, and that all of you accepted. Very well, Captain. I will take care of it. Uh, first of all, Zines, let's uh, let's execute protocol uh, protocol yellow. And out of character, Protocol Yellow will be a thing that we've determined beforehand, Zions, which means, like, if we haven't communicated with you in, like, an hour, just beam us up. Okay. Uh, understood, Captain. Uh, Protocol Yellow in effect. Um, we will continue to scan the surface and as well as the inside of the ship. Thanks, number one. We'll be in touch. Close my communication. And the moment it's closed, uh, Morgan actually chuckles and say. Oh, maybe I should have told him about the number of rats I had stored above his bed. Uh, no, that's okay. I, I'd like to leave that little bit for him to discover later. Now, Morgan, if if you wouldn't mind, I think it's probably best for you to stay here, and I'll go talk to this Merlin character and see what we can find out. But what I said still stands. I am not convinced that it requires any more interference than our bidding to perhaps improve the conditions here for the people. As you wish. Okay, everyone, let's go. Let's go meet Merlin. Yep. All right. So you exit the tavern and you arrive uh, at the base of Merlin's tower, which is this map. And the doors are already open. Uh, you see within, uh, you see Merlin reading a book uh, as, uh, you know, he notices you approach and says, Ah, newcomers, please come in. Hello, Merlin. It's, it's good to see you again. This again, is an impressive tower met? that you have. I'm sorry. Again, have we met? Oh, yes. You introduced yourself to us as we entered town. My my name is Jeffrey, and these are my companions. Again, we are traders from the north. Ah, right, traders from the north. It's been a while since I've I've heard from the north. Uh, do please come in, come in, and he sort of steps back from the entranceway to let you all in. Get and take a look, look around. Yeah. What you're seeing is your stereotypical wizard's tower, lots of books, lots of uh, studying surfaces, lots of scrolls and other scholarly materials, 
Uh, there's throw rugs over the wooden floors. Uh, there's a bed off in the corner to the left. Uh, there's a staircase that spirals up to the right. Uh, and in general, uh, you're seeing that, uh, that this place is well-lived and that the books seem to have been uh, well-read, as it were. But uh, Merlin invites you in, and once you're inside, uh, he says, So, uh, how is the North doing? Uh, it's doing very well. Thank you for asking. Uh, if you don't mind, we, we met a woman here in, in your city. Her, her name is Guinevere. She, she's mentioned that, uh, that she and a few others might be a little unhappy with conditions here in, in Glastonbury. Oh, that's a shame. Is it something I could help with? She's mentioned uh, technology that's been developed that has been prohibited. Do you know anything about that? Zari, I'd like you to roll me a insight and con, please. And you will have a focus that applies. The difficulty is going to be a three. Well, we have the momentum. Do it. Insight con, that's not going to be good. Oh, no, no. My con is not good. Um, should I burn them all? Yeah, I think you should. I certainly will need it. My insight is great. My con, however, you will see. Applicable focus, yes. Three successes. So, as Merlin is talking, Zarya, um, I don't know if you have had the, shall we say, misfortune of having a real loved one in real life, like with dementia. They show telltale signs when uh, their cycle is happening, like when they begin to forget and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Merlin is approaching basically a reset point. That's certainly good to know. I kind of want to hold back and see what happens first to see what that might be like rather than interfere necessarily. Okay. So I'll allow the conversation to continue. Okay. Is it possible for me to kind of like slink around? Not like slink, but as the conversation is going, just like casually walk around the corner here like this. Mm -hmm. So I, I can get a little bit out of sight so I could scan the building or Merlin. I would say that the complication range would be very high and the difficulty would be as well. Then I won't do it. I'll we don't have here. anything for you to burn. Could give me threat. I'll just stay here and... Uh, Instead of looking towards my tricorder, I'll look towards my phaser, just in case things go bad. I'm not giving you threat because you took our cat, so we have no protector from the spiders. <laughs> oh, dear. In any event, uh, Miller, you exchange maybe one or two more sentences with Merlin, and then there's almost like a noticeable physical change in Merlin. Um, his face goes from one of just general confusion to uh, almost a outright confusion. And he, his eyes seemingly lose their glimmer and he says, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know any of you. Uh, were we talking? I, I apologize. That's okay, Merlin. We, we were just discussing and I think you said that it was okay for us to look through your tower. To, to look through my tower, um, hmm. Uh, Do you remember the rats, the, the rat infestation? You said that it was okay for us to investigate, to perhaps remove them for you. Rat infestation? No, no, I'm pretty sure we don't have any of those. Over in the north, we have to deal with a, a lot of vermin, so we are well acquainted with clearing them out of spaces and hopefully that can make this space a lot more comfortable for you oh, it's, it's already very comfortable yeah merlin i noticed outside that uh 
the tree in the center of town is very remarkable. Why don't you uh, show me? Is is there a favorite spot that you have to, to sit at the tree? Uh, Captain Miller, I'd like you to roll me a presence and command. I think you have, what, diplomacy, persuasion, something along those lines? Yeah, I got all those things. Yeah, one of those would apply here. Uh, the difficulty is going to be a three. I think I will bend a determination. Trust goes both ways. I am not distrustful of him yet. Okay. Command presence. Wow. No successes. Okay. So I got two from the ter determination. That was very... Yeah, unfortunately not the three you need. Um, which means that Merlin sort of uh, narrows his eyes a little bit and says, You... You're not from the north, are you? In a matter of speaking, I am. The north, I remember, was far from here. Hardly remember it. Hardly remember anything. And there's almost a level of both dejectedness and frustration in his voice. It's been very What do long. you remember? I remember a sword, a, a king, of giving up in I'm sorry who are you I'll, I'll look to Zarya uh, is there anything we can do here Lieutenant Commander uh, well Merlin we are uh, friends who were sent here to assist if your peoples need anything, if you need anything. Well, I could use a new tea set. I mean, certainly we can help get that set up. Do you have one that's currently broken or are you looking for something that's completely new? And I'm going to sit down with him and actually actively distract him by talking to him about this tea set. Okay. So while she's distracting, what are the rest of you doing? I'd probably motion to Riley and Fredrickson to just be like, do whatever checks you need to, and I will probably stay here with Zarya. Yeah, now I'd like to take the moment to sneak, sneak around and uh, scan for uh, anything out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, and I'll, uh, Fredrickson will probably do the same and like basically just assist on any roles. Uh, by also kind of sneakily using his tricorder like uh, Riley is. Okay. Uh, Riley, uh, why don't you roll me a insight engineering, because you're looking for engineering type things. Uh, Fredrickson can assist with an insight med or not an insight medicine, an insight science. Uh, the difficulty here is going to be a 3, uh, and the complication range will be a 16 to 20, the complication being that Merlin notices you. I don't have any focuses that apply here. Is there any way that Zarya or I could assist and that would be just distracting Miller? Or distracting Merlin? I would say that I'm going to put a limit on how many people can assist and only one other person can assist. So it's either going to be Fredrickson or you. Or Zarya. If I were to assist, could I use my insightful guidance? I'd give it to you, yeah. Okay, so I would like to assist by... Uh, how am I going to assist? Uh, I would say yours is probably a presence medicine. You are using your yeah. psychology, uh, pretty much all your training and such. Yeah. Okay, I'll give it a try. 
Because this would count as a social conflict, right? Technically, yes. Okay. Applicable focus? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> no help. The answer is no. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it, but... Well, if I had succeeded, you would have also gotten an advantage. So... I guess he doesn't notice? <laughs> yeah. So good news, bad news. Good news, uh, he does not notice you, Riley, but... Riley and Fredrickson, you do what you can to scan the surroundings, and you're not seeing anything that the orbital scans didn't. Like, this seems very mundane. Stone, wood, paper, uh, bedding, rugs, nothing that would seem to indicate that it came from a DY-100. When we scanned from orbit, we were able to tell that the pieces were inside the tower, correct? Yes. We just can't tell, like, now where that we're in the are. tower, where they are? Okay. Any word from the uh, Akagi about the ship manifest? Uh, not as of yet, no. Okay, I'll I'll just continue to stay here, maybe out of sight, so if um, anything does break out, I can kind of surprise Merlin with my phaser. Okay. So we go back to a uh, conversation with Miller, Zarya, and Merlin, and Merlin says, I remember giving someone a sword. Where is that I sword? I like to Zarya. I like to Zarya and kind of whisper to her, okay, this could be a bad idea. Merlin, you gave me the sword. I'm here. You called me. I'm here. What can I do? And he looks at you with renewed interest and uh, excitement. He says, Arthur, is that you, Arthur? It is, Merlin. It is. I've returned. Oh. That means I can finally rest. You've come to Avalon. I look to Zarya not really understanding what I'm agreeing to here, but I'm just going to go with it because it seems to be working. And Zarya is nodding. I have returned to Merlin. But I don't know what to do. I, I, You didn't finish instructing me. What should I do with the sword? You should return it to the stone. But Morgan where is the stone? To that. The stone is here. And he pushes a rug out of the way. And there's literally into the floor a stone pedestal. And what will happen when I return the sword to the stone? I believe you know that already, my king. Your time will be over, as will be mine. You mentioned returning to Avalon. Are, are we not there now? You are. You were always fated to come here. This is where you die. Can I sense Billy any does... danger in this situation? Like, is he in active danger or is he just, like, speaking? Nah, he's just speaking. Okay. Good. I got very worried for, like, 0. 0.2 seconds. Merlin, I didn't... I, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that it was time to return the sword. I I left the sword... I must go retrieve it. Did you say that Morgan could help me? Well, Morgan should have brought you here, but... Is Bedivere with you? Bedivere? Yes, you're, you're Sir Bedivere of the Round Table. And I motion, I motion to Fredrickson. Ah, here's, here's Bedivere. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. And, and just looking at Miller with, like, eyes wide, like, what the hell is going on? So Merlin kind of looks at you squinty-eyed, uh, Fredrickson, and says, you cannot be Bedivere. 
Uh, the years have not been kind to Bedivere. He has grown old and ragged in age. But it is Bedivere, I, I assure you. And I, I wink at Fredrickson. No, I mean... He is supposed to bring the sword in your stead. I see no sword. It is true, Merlin. We have, we have left the sword at home. Uh, we shall go retrieve it. I just need assistance. Uh, you said that Morgan would help us to find the sword? You're not Arthur, are you? And Zara, this is the most lucid he's been so far. I'm not sure whether just to say <laughs> yes or no. Uh, I think I'll, I think I'll go with it because it's on me as the captain. If we do, okay. I'll say to Merlin, "You're right, Merlin. I am not Arthur, but I am truthful in that I am here to help you. I just don't know how." There is little that can be done for me. My time is approaching, with or without the sword being returned to where it should be. You said Morgan was here. That is true. Morgan is here. Tell her... Tell her three days from now. How you is he looking after he said that? His eyes go blank again and he looks around at you and says, I'm sorry, were we having a conversation? I do not recognize your faces. We were just talking about your new tea set that we were going to get you. Oh, I'm getting a new tea set. How lovely. Yeah, you said your, your old one was uh, worn out and started to chip around the rims. Mm, yes, they did like to do that. Well, I think we must go now, but we'll come back. We'll bring the tea set with us, and then hopefully we can enjoy a nice pot of tea together. I would like that. And then I'm going to give the captain the signal to just bolt. And as they yeah, say I that, I will start sneaking my way back out. I think we got to I think we've taken this as far as he'll take a, as he'll go with us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you step out of the tower, uh, you otherwise have a little bit of a walk back into town, but this is sort of a time for you to now finally talk amongst each other. Captain, I was I was ready to say that I was Sir Gawain if it was necessary. I uh I have to say, Mr. Riley, this all feels like a farce, or at least a deception, from Morgan and this person, Merlin. I am still not convinced that there is something going on that requires our interference. Just haven't seen this... any evidence. Why would the sword just be in his room like or the, the rock just be in his room like that? The question is, why does it matter? I mean, he's obviously not well. The city is obviously not well. If anything, we could at least support them while they go through whatever changes they're going through. They know of Earth. They may not know the whole history, but they know of Earth. Is it such a... Is it that bad of us to take them away from here? Or at least protect them from whatever dangers Merlin presents? I haven't been convinced that Merlin actually is dangerous in any capacity. And I believe that at this point, I, I think we should talk to Morgan, but unless Morgan can persuade us otherwise, I think we report the situation to the Federation Council and let them deal with it how they will. I, if a first contact scenario is applicable, I think it is. If this society hasn't developed to a point to be acceptable of warp technology, they may know of Earth, and that 
that's fine, but they may not be ready for first contact. I certainly don't think they're in such a dire situation that we should relocate them, though, and, and contaminate their, their society. I don't know. I, I wasn't able to get a clean scan. But if Merlin's as old as they say, and they were worried of being killed, he could be more powerful than we know. And if he's going through some sort of dementia, that's terrifying. He might not know that he would be hurting them. Exactly. Imagine a godlike creature that could just snap their fingers and kill us all, not realizing that that snap had that effect. Hmm. I think Zines. at least... Oh, okay. You can go to that. Uh, Mr. Zines, you are detecting something in the surrounding area because you're a paranoid son of a bitch. Can you guess what it might be? Uh, a ship decloaking? Uh-huh. Can you guess how many? Uh, a few? Uh-huh. Can you guess what kind of ship? <laughs> uh, Three. I, I was going to go with Klingon, but just for the swerve and the M. Night Shemalamalamalamalon, you know, ooh, what a twist. Romulan? No, unfortunately, they are Klingon. But, ah. uh... They are Klingons decloaking in orbit. And unfortunately, that is where we're going to have to end today's session on a cliffhanger. So, no! Uh, we will pick up uh, and do the second part to this uh, two weeks from now. Uh, so players stick around for a little bit longer. Pretend I'm watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc. Thank you for watching. And we will see the conclusion to this in a week's in two weeks' time. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, stream.